Hello again, DeFi IoT. Doing the second video I talked about in the last video that I want to do today and talk more so on what's really going on, how that's going to affect cryptocurrencies. Some fears I have, or I should say rather concerns I have. I don't like that word, fear. Of what's going to happen in the crypto market coming out this year and over the next few months. I think we're going to have to buckle up and be ready for a ride. And I see what's coming. And I want to share that with you. You may not agree with me, but I'm going to share it with you. Let's talk about it. Look, I know I've gotten a few of you saying to me, you really got to get off your political bias. I don't care what side of the party you're on, right? I mean, I just, to be clear, I'm not a registered Republican, right? So, nor am I a registered Democrat. I am, I do feel a party, yes. But I would be considered more of a, I don't know what you want to call me, actually, because it's not really a party that fits me yet. However, in cryptocurrency, I am more of a Bitcoin ideologist than I am an Ethereum ideologist. And I've always said Ethereum is going proof of staking because they're centralized. Any blockchain that is proof of staking is definitely much more centralized. It mimics the traditional financial institution, though there are some variances, but it's moving that direction. And it's much easier to censor, to control, as we've seen in Ethereum. And what we're watching right now with Ethereum-based projects, look, just recently, the last few days, even MetaMask comes out and says, look, if you're Russian, now if you're Venezuelan, or if you're in Iraq, you can no longer use our services. And not to mention NFT platforms. OpenSea, for example, has taken away the accounts of Russian people, of Venezuelan people, of Iraqi people in other countries. Just now all of a sudden they are going to do this because they're going to support the sanctions against Vladimir Putin and his invasion of Ukraine. Now I am not applauding at all Vladimir Putin and, and what they're doing in Ukraine. But there's much more to this than meets the eye. You have to understand that a lot of corruption goes on in Ukraine. Ukraine's very very corrupt. It's not that this beautiful, peaceful, democratic nation that we all need to go and rush in and save. It's not. It's a tyrannical government that bases their government on corruption. And many politicians, including the administration now in the U.S., Trudeau in Canada, amongst many others in Europe that form NATO, this body that wants to go in now and injects all these sanctions on Vladimir Putin and Russians in general, amongst others, it's not just and it's not right. And we as cryptocurrency supporters, if we truly are in cryptocurrency for that reason, we got involved in GPUs because it represents a free market economy. Anybody can do it. My son, my youngest son, got me involved in GPUs, got us all involved in it. And now our company, we have nearly 100 of the GPUs, 91, 92 to be exact, running. We're going to add to it with renewable energy, solar panels. Why? If Ethereum goes offline, what's going to happen to our GPUs? That's a good question. 
But I got a feeling that we're in a war right now, not against Vladimir Putin and his fascist communist ideologies. Remember something. The lie of fascism is that it's on the right. I'm going to blow your minds right now for those that haven't truly been educated correctly, with no offense, but fascism is on the left. It's not on the right. It never was on the right. That was just a picture they painted after World War II because <laughs> we actually liked, Roosevelt liked, going into the World War II, he actually liked a lot what Hitler was doing. He wanted to be able to implement that into the United States. Now, we know he died in 1945, so we didn't get a chance to do that. But we have had time since the 90s where fascism has been implemented in the United States. And it's not those people on the right. It's not those people that are being accused of, of overthrowing the state capital, which I saw today. One was convicted, which is sad, because there were truly people there that were actually trying to actually overthrow the capital that had nothing to do with Donald Trump or this whole movement. So keep this in mind. Now, let's talk a little about what's going on really in Russia. What's going on really in Russia right now is they want to protect their backyard. There's oil coming through there. Europe wants that oil. They're all dependent on that oil. If they can do something to get Ukraine to stay in bed with them, they can tap into those tanks. That will be awesome for them. So basically there's more. Russia wants to protect their backyard. Now, and I'm not saying what they're doing is 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 the correct approach to it, right? But diplomacy, I don't think, was there. Now, we all obviously know, too, that Russia and China have, a, have an alliance together. And Russia can get around all this, these sanctions, just by joining with China and trading with China. You've got, you know, what, a third, or if not more, of, of, of the world's consumption that would go into China. So Russia can get around all these sanctions going to China. What I want to warn everybody about, whether you have for what Putin is doing or not what Putin is doing, don't buy into what the media, what, what Biden and Trudeau and these guys are coming out saying, we got to defend these free people. We need to stand up and defend freedom when they, for the last two years, have been doing everything but defending free people. Look how they're treating their truckers in Canada. Finally, I just saw that one of the leaders of those truckers finally got released from the Ottawa jail and she was ordered to leave Ottawa immediately. Like she was some sort of major terrorist or criminal and she was put basically under a type of house arrest in her home. For doing what? Organizing a peaceful protest, which they can do under their constitution. Well, you like it or don't like it, they can do it. I'm sorry. What BLM did and Antifa did last year was not peaceful. That destroyed people's businesses, livelihoods. You know, I don't see the media out there going up and saying, hey, how are you a year afterwards? I know in this little small town where we are now, we have this crypto mining farm, that there are, are so many homeless people now. Just a couple the other day in a very nice park where there was never any crime were just stabbed to death. They were there. A couple stabbed to death. But when it's homeless people, they weren't there before. Where'd they come from over the last year? Two and two always ends up being four, no matter how you want to look at it. Were the truckers going to cause something like that? No, absolutely not. And actually, the police went in afterwards and shut down the city worse than it was actually just closed off on roads and certain access points. But you could go around them and get to your offices. You could walk. They didn't shut anything down. The police have always shut down. Look, we got to stop buying into the whole media narrative. That's all centralized. You know, six major companies in the world owns about all major news media, um, broadcasting, papers, etc. So we have to understand that. And a lot of those are part of the WEF, the World Economic Forum, which is behind a lot of this agenda. So what's what's the agenda? What's in it for crypto? What's going to take this crypto? Well, waiting for Joe Biden's executive order to come out. By the way, executive order is not really law, by the way. Okay, so we have to understand that. Law is produced by Congress and then goes to the Senate and then it's signed into law, right? So that's the top, proper process for law. 
executive order is an executive order, and really, there's really only very few occasions where executive orders should be and can be issued. Now, executive orders can be overturned as well, right? so much easier than laws. So an executive order is going to come out that's going to envelope cryptocurrency. What they're going to base it off of is the fact that in these sanctions that are, they're offering, that, that they're actually demanding right now, and look what they're doing, the sanctions. Not only are they sanctioning Russians, right? And now, whatever U.S. sanctions or whoever they sanction, now you've got MetaMask. They're blaming it on their back door who they're with. All this lines up Ethereum, right? You've got OpenSea lined up with Ethereum. They're saying it's because of Ethereum that they have to now sanction all the people in these sanctioned countries. That's all of a sudden. And what they're doing? Just taking away their accounts. So that's funny. Who's getting all that? This is a basic legal hack. And that's what the government's doing as well. U.S. government, along with our current U.S. administration, along with European governments and Canada, want to take away the people's assets. And they're seizing their assets through the banking systems, through by eliminating the SWIFT so they can't move their assets, by going offshore to other jurisdictions, taking their yachts, taking their property. If you're a Russian citizen in the United States of America right now, you've got to be fearful that the government won't take your property. That's what they did to the Japanese years ago. And they didn't do that when we got attacked on 9-11 for suspect type of people, for terrorist groups. They didn't do that because they felt that was inhumane. Now all of a sudden it works to their advantage and that's actually very humane. And if you are going to support that in any way, shape, or form, just like people did through cryptocurrency donations or intimate donations in Canada, you are supporting terrorism. And you are a threat to national security. Mark my word, this is where they're probably going to go with cryptocurrency. Anybody who supports Bitcoin type of cryptocurrencies, not Ethereum type of cryptocurrencies, those are centralized. Those will be okay because they KYC everything. They can control you. And if they sanction anybody, including you, then they know the Ethereum or any project based on Ethereum will do the same because they have to do the same. They're going to go after DeFi. They're going after decentralized finance. That's what, the, that's what this war is. Centralization and decentralization. On a global aspect, some say Putin is anti-globalism. I'm yet to see that because there are things that lean one way that he is anti-globalism, another that doesn't lean that way. One thing is for sure, he's rebelling right now against that whole basic movement because the globalism wants to take away his resources. So he has his own agenda. Like Elon Musk has his own agenda. Everybody's out there fighting for their own agenda. And that's fine. The sad thing is, is, what are we doing? We have an opportunity to stand up for things also. To stand up and say, hey, I'm going to support Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin was based off of a free market economy that allows anybody, poor, middle class, or even wealthy, but anybody can come in and get involved. And you can come in at a fraction of a cost to get involved. You need to do your research, do your homework. you got to work. Heck, even Adam, when he was cast out of the garden, was told he had to work by the sweat of his brow. The point is this. We need to get away from this deceptive tactics of the media with supporting channels like CNN, for example, NBC, CNBC. Sorry, guys. Even Fox, unfortunately, falls into that play. And they kind of over-exaggerate one end, so it pushes you to the other end. There's a play there. I used to watch Fox years ago. I don't watch much Fox anymore. There's a few people on there I like to watch. But I like to dig in and find people that really, truly look for the truth. Epic Times, Epic TV, even Tim Pool and Tim Katz. I mean, I agree 100% with them, but I like them. Crowder, you know, some of you can say, well, they're right-wing. Well, they're not right-wing. They're right there. They just want to find the truth. They don't care which political party is true. They just want to find the truth. And they want to help defend free market, free agency, and freedom in the world. A responsible freedom, not an anarcho or, or a chaotic type of freedom. We want to have this, this freedom that is responsible. And that's what Bitcoin offers us. So, just as a food for thought, consider these things, please. Seek for yourself the truth. But if you're only in the NFT market, and I really, I, 
on open sea. I know my wife was doing stuff on open sea, and I'm going to ask her. I'm not going to tell her. She can make her own choices. But I'm going to ask her, and I'm going to persuade her and explain to her. If you support open sea, you're supporting now centralization, and you're supporting also these governments that want, can take your private property away from you at any time, and they're anti-crypto. They really are. Staking is not a good thing, people. It's not good. I like these GPUs, even ASIC miners, renewable energies. You got to put some money into it. Yeah, that's true. But if you only have a few GPUs, it doesn't take much to solar panels or it doesn't even take much electricity for that matter. And you know what? We wouldn't have an electricity problem if it wasn't for the World Economic Forum and these agendas to shut down fracking. Right now, we're at a pinch. Europe's in a pinch. And they have all the excuse to get people on board and support them because they're going to freeze next winter. If Putin's allowed to shut off the oil, we need to take that away from him. That's private property to take him. And you know what? Right now, it's Vladimir Putin. Tomorrow, it could be you and it can be me. And I'm really sure that that's what their intent is. DeFi IoT. Hit the subscribe button, please. Follow us. We tell it how it is. We look for the truth and we relate it to you. What we find through our experience and through our extensive studies. Give us a like, hit the bell, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, there's something I forgot to include in this. Why do, what do we think is going to happen with cryptocurrency due to, you know, this whole war, the, you know, the sanctions? Where do we think cryptocurrency is going to go from here? Well, here, here's what, what we feel, as well as I've been really searching a lot of other people that I really confide into, um, to see what they're saying, we're kind of on, we're all on the same page here. You know, cryptocurrency was built for moments like this, but the true test is coming right now. Is that we have a war? You're going to have possible hyperinflation. You know, and that's not coming from the war. That's coming from what the governments did by printing more money and just handing out these handouts during these these last two years, right? Um, but on top of that, we're going to have a production issue, a supply and demand issue. So there's a lot of things coming down at one time. Plus, you got a power grab from all of these governments. Uh, you know, FATF is really trying to help regulate this in countries, not just the Biden administration, but you got a power grab from all, many different governments, from the World Economic Forum, United Nations. There's this huge power grab going on. Everybody's trying to put it all off on Putin. So where do I think crypto is going to go? In all honesty, I think long term we're looking good. But we need to buckle up. As the Massar report stated at the end of December, when we were reading and, and, and given a review of the Massar report, you need to buckle up this, for this year. And this was kind of anticipated. Not all this in one, one shabam, but crypto now is going to be tested. And um, long term, what alternative is there? What other alternative is there? Gold and silver is too big, too bulky, and governments can take it away. They've done it more than once. So digital currency is not good. Digital currency is not cryptocurrency. That is not good. That's the opposite of what Bitcoin stands for. So I think long term, we have uh, a good potential in crypto, but we're going to have to buckle up and be ready for this ride where it's going to take a downturn for a while. So just mining is the best way right now to be in crypto. If you're day trading, that could be another way too. just be conservative was what we're going to do and what I suggest you do too. But do your homework. DeFi IoT, we'll talk to you tomorrow. We hope you enjoyed this segment of our video with DeFi IoT. Remember, we're not professional advisors. We do this as a business, as a hobby, and we study, we experiment, and we want to share it with you. If you can get some benefit from this, great. What we do is we go out, we purchase with our own money, and we experiment to see what true results are. We want you to be able to share in our experiences so you don't have to lose like we have. If you can win where we've won, fantastic. Remember to do your own research and your own homework. It's very important before you make any decisions. We will see you in our next video.